Look, everybody, if Dickerson's not here in 30 seconds, I'm invoking the five-minute rule. Oh, what's the five-minute rule? Well, if the teacher doesn't show up within five minutes of the bell, everyone is free to leave. <laughs> we all remember Saved by the Bell. It was one of the most popular shows of the 1990s, and it helped define that generation. Now, the co-creator and executive producer, Peter Engel, has written a new book with behind-the-scenes stories and a whole lot more. He's here with us today. Welcome. The book looks great, and your story also, <laughs> Peter. My goodness. I was looking at your book. You walk into NBC as a young man. You, you asked to be a page. And now you're responsible for more than a thousand episodes of television. <laughs> Most of them with them. Story. They say I don't have my company at the end. Uh, yeah, I was going to NYU during the day, and I wanted to be a page. Mm -hmm. Not any page. It had to be an NBC page, not mm -hmm. CBS, pardon, less. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> not ABC at 30 Rock. This Dave Garroway had been a page, Gregory Peck, Ted Cobble, the newscaster, was my boss, sure. a head page. And I'm at NYU film, and I, got, I jump on the subway because everyone said they'd get me in, and never. And I get up there, and I say, I want to be a page. They say, well, we only take it by applications by mail. And I was a very shy kid mm -hmm. uh, in those days. And I said, well, then I'm from the first one here for the interview. And <laughs> that wasn't me. And then they said, uh, they said we take them only by mail, 14,000, and we take seven. Not eight. Wow. Anyway, I talked my way in, and I started that Monday as a page. And years later, um, here I am sitting when they own half my company, and we're doing balance seven other shows, Last yeah. Comic Standing, I'm sitting, uh, not with my uniform, I'm sitting up with the chairman and the president and my pals. And you may have noticed he just said bell, that's saved by the yeah. bell. I guess that was the, the word that everybody yeah, used. We use bell gen, bell gen, we use in the book, bell generation, we always on, refer to it as bell. We're looking at some video of the show now. It really did define a generation. Okay. I remember my sister watching this on the weekends there, and you would go on mall tours and all sorts of right, things, and right. you would be swamped. No, it was wild. The, uh, we, the first mall tour, my daughter was going to high school in Florida, and, and in Miami, so my associate Albert Spivak, who came up with the idea at MVP, let's go to Miami, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. So we go to Miami, we go to Broward Mall, we do radio, we're coming, Tiffany, Empathy, and Mark, mm -hmm. Paul, and I, and the teacher, of course. Sure. And we go to the Broward Mall, and I say to the police, do you have, we, now we had nothing to sell. <laughs> we, we just autographed some pictures, nothing. And we've been, been on the air a couple of months, right? There are 10,000 kids at the Broward Mall. And, so, and it got so crazy to the point where the police had to come in in Jeeps to wow. get two Jeeps, and we lost the teacher. And could you imagine that's before social media, all these uh, people we just were showing getting, up to the mall? If it was now, it would be even, uh, even more. Uh, yeah, right? yeah, but uh, we, we used to get 15,000 pieces of mail a week. Now, you did so many episodes of, of Bell. Yeah. Is there one particular episode that really stands out to you that kids remember? Well, the one they all remember is Jesse's song, which is one of the ones I, I wrote 11, and I rewrote every one, obviously. I particularly love the thing called Risky Business, where Screech's parents go away mm -hmm. to, to um, Graceland for their anniversary, and they leave Zach in charge of the house. Yeah. That's like they have the inmates in charge of the asylum. But the one that resonates most uh, with like my daughter and, and, with, and with most uh, teenage girls, especially at the time, was Jessie's song, where she had put so much pressure on herself to get to Stanford, mm -hmm. SATs, that she takes the caffeine pills. Well, I didn't know what caffeine pills were. Mm -hmm. And everyone said it seemed like she was on heroin. I'm so excited! I'm so excited! I'm so scared! Well, the point was, that has resonated, because it wasn't a drug episode. Those were just a manifestation of the pressure she put on, Elizabeth Berkeley put on herself, Miss Jesse. And we wrote it as amphetamine speed. And we're in a network meeting, and they go, no way. Can't do it. And so what my co-writer on it, Tom, said, how about caffeine pills? So I said, sure. I didn't even know what they were. I just wanted to get the hell out of the, I wanted I to get out of the right. office. <laughs> and so that was one that really resonated. The audience was crying during it. I bet. I mean, and you have so many great stories in the book. And also, you met uh, John Lennon, Orson Welles. It's all in the book. For more information about Peter Engel and how to get his new book, go to kcal9.com. You can see we could have gone talking about this over and <laughs> over and Well, they can over. go to Amazon or my site. I was saved by the bell.com. Excellent. Thank you so much. I